Hello again, gang. Welcome back to the channel, Jay Wower here. It's another Football Manager 2023 experiment, and it's that continued journey through the deep dive of hidden attributes today. It's all about important matches. Let's get into it. Yes, we've got important Isaac and unimportant Uriah. I've made them both English. Don't know why. Um, Possibly a mistake. Never mind. So yes, we've got unimportant Uriah and important Isaac. I don't know why I did that in reverse alphabetical order, but here we are. That is what we did. Um, Made them both English, and I'll tell you why. Because I want to know if England get to some of the bigger matches in European competition, they choose important Isaac over unimportant Uriah. In terms of their growth and their potential ability, I don't see them differing to too much i think they'll both hit it i think it'll be very much of a muchness it's just the important matches their big cup finals will isaac reign supreme what would be ideal is a champions league final of isaac versus uriah will we get that possibly possibly not we will see they've both got 90 current ability they've both got 200 potential ability let's have a look that is the polygon this is the attribute breakdown identical attribute breakdowns except of course the hidden attributes you've got 20 for everything one for loyalty 10 for controversy 10 for dirtiness one for injury proneness important matches is 20 for important isaac and then unimportant uriah Uriah will have the same breakdown except one for important matches. Both six foot, both 11 stone. Without further ado, let's jump through one year and see where they start their careers. Okay, so Isaac's gone to Chelsea. Uriah's gone to Aston Villa. They've both moved to 112. Isaac has been retrained as a number 10, as has Uriah. They've both been retrained as number 10s. And Isaac's also been sort of makeshift defensive midfielder. They've both been retrained as number 10s. That's... That's very unusual for at this point in the experiment, but hey, it is what it is. Uriah then has actually played twice for Aston Villa. Three times if you include the cup, and he's got a goal in the cup. But they're both still barely in their infancy at their specific clubs. We will be jumping through three years now because we want to get into the meat and potatoes of this experiment without dragging out the early days too much. Because the meat and potatoes of this experiment is the 27 to 32 range where they are going to be at their top of their game. We want to sort of get to there in good time, but without, we don't want to jump straight to it. We want to go along the way and see how the growth differs. As you can see here, they are exactly the same, 112 to 112. I don't know if we've ever had that with two players in a comparative experiment. Let me know in the comments down below if we have, because I can't remember. Maybe you can. If you haven't seen all those videos, go and watch them after this one, though, of course. If you're new around here, give us a subscribe, and why not like this video if you like this kind of content? There's a lot more out there in this sort of style, so I hope you're enjoying it. I hope you would like the idea of it, and if you've not, if you've been here before, feed that algorithm for me. Come on. Come on, regulars. I'm counting on you. That's right, so over four years into the experiment and unimportant Uriah has improved by 14 more attribute points he's up at 166 at the age of 19 he is already world class he's wanted by Man United he's done 81 grand a week let's have a look at what he's done then in his career so for a couple of years in oh yeah didn't really do anything for the first two years then he went on loan to Blackburn scoring 17 and 42 and that was enough for Aston Villa they said Uriah get in the team and he scored 30 Premier League goals, which quite possibly could have given him the golden boot. Shall we go and have a look? We will. But let's have a quick look at Isaac. He was improved considerably less in a direct comparison then. We are looking at the polygons. And for me, obviously, they've both got the same potential ability. So you do want the important matches. Because important matches is a big thing um, for a lot of people as a hidden attribute. And me included. Me included. If they hate important matches, I do always go like, mm. It's not the be-all and end-all. Consistency and injury proneness are the big ones for me. Even though we've kiboshed some of those... Uh, stigmas certainly on injury proneness anyway i think but anyway yes there you go so isaac is considerably worse talking about his career then he went to palace on loan got nine in 15 and again much like we saw with um uriah chelsea have decided to keep isaac for the following season and he's played 10 times nine of them off the bench this is the problem when you go to a big club too early they don't get the game time that they need to develop and as you can see there he's not had the game time but chelsea have won a league of course uriah was was not part of that league winning squad. Man City have won it every other year. If we look at the award winners then, Football of the Year was Raheem Sterling last year. Top goal scorer. It, so you've got Uriah on 30 in this Premier League season. Gianluca Scamacca on 24. An early 25-year-old Erling Haaland only got 19. You've got to say that's a bit of a poor season for old Erling. He, do you know what? He's, he's not scored that many for Man City at all. He's, hasn't he scored like 50-odd this season in real life? Honestly. 
three. Three seasons combined there is like 55. You'll probably get that. He's probably got that by the time this comes out. This isn't going to come out till the back end of May, mid-May. Well, you know when it's come out, you're watching it. So a golden boot for your unimportant Uriah. Where did Aston Villa finish in that Premier League season then? That's a, that's something to look at. Aston Villa finished fourth inside the Champions League places. And yeah, do you know what? I'm not surprised because if you've got a player that's scoring 30 goals, you are going to come up with the goods. Let's have a look here. 1-0 against Everton. It was Uriah. 2-1 against Man City. Anthony Martial. Did not expect him to be there. Leeds. Anthony Martial get in another brace. Okay, Anthony Martial's been fantastic. He scored seven. We've just seen four of them. Fulham. Uriah with a penalty. Grabbing a draw. Brentford. Wasn't Uriah. Leicester. Two for Uriah. One for Anthony Martial. Uriah again. Uriah scoring. Well, he scored three penalties there. Again, Uriah scoring in a victory. Scored two in a 3-0 win. Two in a 3-1 win. Obviously, I'm just trying to look at some of the goals that he scored just to see how many points he sort of grabbed them. Here you go. 2-2 two, two against Manchester City. He got both. The loads of draws. Loads of wins are cur coming courtesy of him. He's giving that confidence to the team and results do breed confidence that when, you, when you're winning and you're avoiding defeat, it spurs you on in the next games. So he has propelled Aston Villa to Champions League football. Can he do it again? And can um, matey boy Isaac catch him up? Can he, can he play at Chelsea? We'll see, won't we? They're only 19. He's in the under 18s though, is Isaac. Um, unusual. Let's, another three years? I think another three years is, is a sensible jump. So let's do it. Ugh. Gone to PSG. Right. Is it PSG? 425 grand a week. Move for 99 million pounds. He's fantastic, isn't he? He is a fantastic player. Um, how long did he stay? Oh, he's moved. He's been at PSG one year. So he's had another two years at Villa. So let's go and have a quick look at how Villa done. Man City have just walked the league every single year so far. This is where we were then with Aston Villa. They finished fourth. The following season, they got Conference League football. Not 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 scoring enough and not uh, keeping it tight at the back. They then finished sixth, doing a little bit better. And then they finished ninth, getting in the Europa way for Champions League so they've just won the Europa League haven't they yes they have they won the Europa League without him I can't believe it 25 and 21 well that was enough for Uriah to get the golden boot top goal scorer three times in a row Hendricks at Arsenal Erling Haaland again with 19 why can't he score more than 20 goals he's done it twice in his first two seasons and he's just not getting it he's playing and Man City are walking the league as well I don't get it anyway Uriah 21 goals here 25 there and 30 as we saw last time so he has gone to PSG where he has of course won the league after they'd lost the league to Monaco so he's gone to PSG and he's helped them reclaim the league on goal difference and it wasn't goals scored that did it it was goals against that managed to sneak the league title and it was Gonzalo Ramos who took the top goal scorer accolade here with 23 beating Uriah who only got 20 in terms of continental competitions though he did get 11 in 15 so did PSG manage to win Champions League they did not it's not there he went out in the semi-final of the Champions League two eventual winners Borussia Dortmund but that Liverpool have won a couple isn't it funny how Manchester City have only won one Champions League in this experiment yet they've absolutely walked the Premier League every single year in terms of Uriah's hidden attributes then he has kept everything pretty much where it was except he's got three for important matches interesting Isaac then has gone to Chelsea he's at 179 he's considerably worse and that's because he hasn't played as many games almost certainly there's the polygon and it just stands to reason doesn't it Uriah is the better player at this moment in time if we do look at Isaac's career then so far he's got a 7.15 overall he's scored he's, the problem is, is his average rating is going to be much lower because he's not scoring as many goals and it's because he's become he's coming off the bench more often than not this is the first season actually that he's actually broke through into the Chelsea team and they managed to finish second so he's propelled them to a second place finish Graham Potter still in charge ironically Chelsea did win the league and they finished fourth third second third second so they've been in the Champions League places every single year which you'd expect really with a squad of that strength they've got Victor Osserman Datro Fafana Isaac they've got some firepower up front and Nico Williams they're playing Isaac has got six goals in four caps for England whereas Uriah's got 20 in 38 wow and it's Sean Dyche, the gravelly, the gravelly voice of Sean Dyche in charge of England, leading those team talks. And we've had Ernesto Valverde and Olivier Daloglio. We've got no Ralph yet. Where is Ralph? He's the manager of Ireland. He went to Palace, got relegated, got promoted, manager of the year, resigned. Austria manager, of course, Austria manager, gone from bad results and he's gone to Ireland about a year ago. Okay, so we are moving forward through this experiment now at a lovely little pace. We are going to continue that pace with another. I'm going to go 
four years now because I think by then Isaac will have got to his 200 potential. Of course he's got there. He has got there. And Uriah is a model professional, which let's have a quick look at his attributes then. His hidden attributes. Important matches at four and he's still a model professional. So that tells me all I need to know. It doesn't really affect their personality type. You look at model professional and you go, yes, please. I'll have him. Could have four important matches. It's something to think about. Something to think about. I mean, in terms of his overall career, he's got a 7.27. And I do fear, I was going to say, I do fear that he's going to have a bit of a skewed um, average rating now because he's playing for PSG in a league that they, in theory, should be walking and are, although they lost to Marseille in the first season back to we left, where he only got 19. But every other year, he's got 26, 23, 23. He's got a lot of goals um, in a league that's, quite frankly, beneath him. 204 in 325 at 7.27. He's never been a substitute, really, that much. That's probably why he's going to have a much higher rating than uh, Isaac. We will look at Isaac, who he has got to 200 now. We'll have a quick look at the polygons. And now, for me, Isaac's the man. Isaac's polygon looks nicer to me. I'd have Isaac in my team ahead of him. Season stats, 52 in 63. Hello, he's had a season, hasn't he? We've not ticked over. 7.41. So he's actually got a better average rating. Yeah, he's been he's, he's had these down here where he's been a substitute. I don't quite get how that's happened. Look at that. 16 in 17 continentally. He's got 26 in 24 for England. Uriah's got 56 in 82. Eddie Howe's in charge. John Dash got sacked. Eddie's won the Euros. Right, and so in terms of the English Premier Division then, well, Chelsea have won it, but Arsenal have won it the most recent season. And Isaac missed out on the golden boot to Magini. That's not Voldemort Snake. That would be Nagini for the Harry Potter fans out there. He looks a good player though, doesn't he? Anyway, Isaac, he has got 19 finishing, 17 pace. He's done very, very well. In terms of, I mean, 31, surely got golden boot there and probably got golden boot here. Let's go and have a look then. Yes, he did. He got 28 goals and he managed to win the golden boot. Finally, Erling Haaland comes to the bloody party. 27 goals in 34 games. That's a little bit more Erling Haaland-ish, isn't it? And then 23 and 34 is, is getting there. And then 11 in 32. What happened this most recent season? Erling Haaland had a shocker. 31 here, of course, for Isaac. Fantastic. And Magini, 26 in 36. So he got the top goal scorer where Erling Haaland altered, but they finished third. Arsenal winning the league for the first time in the experiment. Lovely stuff. As I said, Uriah. So he's at PSG. Got a, he's got a lower average rating. I don't quite get how. Maybe it's the amount of games. I don't know. Don't know. Anyway, he did. He's got he's got the top goal scorer twice when he got 23 and 26 respectively. Gonzalo Ramos is always on his tail. And Amain Chris got it this most recent season. And Uriah didn't even make the top three. It was only Gonzalo Ramos in second. And Benny Sesco, my best, your best friend and mine, Benjamin Sesco there at Olympic Marseille. A lot of time for Benny Sesco. He was at Man City for a lot of his career where he was playing. Oh, he was just a sub merchant for Erling Haaland. A disappointing Erling Haaland. That really annoys me. Benny Sesco's had his career sort of semi wasted, but he's still a phenomenal talent. Look at him. He's got to Marseille. Marseille ripping it up. And they've won three Champions Leagues of Paris Saint-Germain. Three in the last four years, beating oh, Barcelona, Liverpool, Liverpool v Arsenal, interrupting, and PSG versus Chelsea. We've had it. We've only gone and bloody had it, ladies and gentlemen. Uriah versus Isaac. And it was Uriah with two goals in the Champions League final. Well, he's come up trumps in this important match, hasn't he? He got two here against Manchester City, where McGinney got one. And then the second leg was 2-2, where he didn't score. Still got a 7.2, though. He could have had that trick in the Champions League finally missed a penalty a silly tit oh well there you go then the, unimpor the unimportant matches thing doesn't seem to be having well does it have, seem to be having an effect he's, he's got a worse average rating it's something to think on isn't it I'm not too sure um, at this at this juncture about how much difference he's made Does they're both winning golden boots they're both winning well have, they haven't really won anything it's, it's, your Isaac has played less for England I'm I'm, sh I'm, I'm I'm surprised I am surprised but they have both they have both won a domestic league Uriah has of course won more with PSG. He's playing in a league that's considerably worse, so he should be winning them. But they've won three Champions Leagues in four years, which is very impressive. Anyway, right, on we move. Four more years then to 2037. They will be 30 years old. And they're both still exactly where they were last time. Uriah and Isaac, both at Chelsea and PSG, respectively. Uriah's dropped to 199. In terms of his attributes, his important matches is still only at four. PSG have won the league every single year. The award winners in terms of the um, top goal scorer. Well, Uriah has Benny Sesco won one where Uriah got 28 goals and finished second. Then he got 28 and finished first. He's then got 27 and finished first. And he only got 21 the most recent season. And he's come third in that table. PSG have won another Champions League. Man City have won one. Dortmund and Barcelona. So nothing for Chelsea. But it was another PSG v Chelsea final 
two years ago. So PSG got Chelsea's number. Pep's in charge of PSG as well. Missed that. Champions League final. Well, Isaac and Uriah both did play. And Uriah got a 6.1. Ooh, there's your important matches stat for you. A 6.1 in the Champions League final. A winning Champions League final. He was hauled off for someone. Possibly Vinicius Junior. Can we can we check this? We bloody can. Subbed off in the 75th minute. Oh, so he could have come off for Junior, Vinicius Junior, Vitinha or Pacenti. Pacenti's a striker. Vinicius Junior is probably a winger. He's a defender. Okay, so yeah, Vinicius Junior didn't come on for him, but he did score the winner of him come off the bench. 6.1. Very, very poor. So that being said, Uriah has got plenty of goals now under his belt. Lots, lots of uh, goals in the league. Good average rating. A 7.32 overall. Isaac then. We have a quick look at the poly polygons. Yeah. Again, the polygons are borderline the same as last time, I think. Isn't it funny how aerially Uriah is better, but Isaac's actually grown an extra inch. And he scored plenty of goals for Chelsea and he's got 7.42. What was it? What was Uriah? 7.32. So Isaac's got a much better average rating over the years. 34 and 49 for England. He's got 88 and 124. So he's obviously the, the, the preferred option up front. Ralph Hassenhutl, he's gone back to Austria to manage. He resigned after a run of bad results. He was at Ireland for four years and he, he left to go back to Austria and he's been relegated from the Interna European International League. And I fear Ralph is on his way. He's at 69 years years old nice he's on his way to retirement he's probably never going to be the England manager in terms of the Premier League then Chelsea have won two of the last three current Premier League champions as well fair play Chelsea and in terms of the award winners the top goal scorer well uh, Magini got it the most recent season but Isaac won the season before but it's been Magini every single year just beating Isaac tipping him to the post very impressive very impressive well here's you having the better time of it um, in the Champions League they've beaten Chelsea twice but Isaac has had a better career in terms of I don't know about goals to games ratio but in terms of average rating 100% he's doing better and he's but he's played considerably less for England so I don't really know what to make of it so far but we are going to jump through another it's, we'll go, well it's the end of the careers isn't it it's the end of the careers we're going to go to so let's let's try and find it they're both still there in 2043 both still at their clubs improving let's go to 2044 right they're both gone they both retired at exactly the same time so th there we go they both retired at exactly the same time a very fair experiment Uriah's on 168 Isaac is on 167. So Isaac's on 167. Let's have a quick look at Uriah's um, important matches has gone up to five. Brilliant. Okay. In terms of his career, I'm going to be in the way now, so I'm going to quickly move to the left-hand side. So it's a 7.33 overall, 442 in 648. And it's a 7.38 for Isaac, but only 362 in 612. So he's got less goals and in the most recent seasons. I think he's probably slotted back maybe into the number 10, not hitting 20 goals a season. But Chelsea have won the most recent league. West Ham won the season before, but in the terms of the past, well, one, two, three, six times Chelsea have won the league. Aston Villa have won one as well so there's that the six six leagues for Chelsea so he's done very well in that regard PSG have just won the league every single year I mean very difficult to sort of gauge the level isn't it but Uriah has only won the golden boot once since we were last here I believe or was it Benny Sesco won it the most recent season I think Ben Sesco sorry it was Ben Sesco was it no 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 Uriah won it a couple of times and it was Chris I think I was, oh, I don't know. Yeah, 2036 37. That's when we were last here. Yeah, he's won it once since then, 28 goals. And again, Isaac, he won it the same season. Quite quite, quite funny, isn't it? And the most recent season, PSG have won another Champions League. Chelsea have lost in a final to Juve in 2041-42. They've lost two finals to PSG. PSG have won, lost a couple of finals themselves. Let's have a look then. Raul in charge of PSG. The Champions League final down here. The unimportant, unimportant Uriah. Didn't score in the win. Got a 6.8. And they, we can't go back here. But he did score in a 2-1 defeat to Man City. And they lost 2-0 there. We could go back and we could look at the ratings. But I think, we, I think we can establish that he did considerably worse in the big matches. Chelsea did not win a Champions League through the entire experiment, unfortunately. 18 110 for Isaac for England, whereas he got 129 and 185. It was a very, very good return for Uriah. And yeah, we did not get Ralph at England. He's, he's not going to still be about, is he, Ralph? Of course he's not. Ralph's gone. It, 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 Uriah's had a slightly better England career, would you say? I think in terms of appearances, absolutely. In terms of goals to games... Absolutely not. In terms of goals in the league overall and all-time career goals, he's got considerably more. But he was, again, he was playing at a weaker level. So he got a worse average rating through his career then. Shall we have a look who won Football of the Year to round this off? Right then. Oh, well. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a clean sweep, isn't it? Seven Football of the Years for Uriah. 
versus 1 for Isaac. Golden Ball was 6-1 to Uriah. NXGN was 1-0. Under-21 Football of the Year was 2-0. The Goal 50 was 6-0. He, he was third here, was Isaac, in this season. There we go. I think that's quite conclusive. I would say... What have I learned from this and what have you learned from this? Well, I can't tell you what you've learned. You're going to have to tell me in the comments down below. So please do what you've gleaned from this. What have I learned? I don't think I've learned anything new. I think I think it's just reinforced my feelings on important matches. When you've got a player that likes important matches, you feel more confident in giving them the big one. Um, you do feel like important matches is, a, is an important attribute. Not to development. As you saw, Uriah, absolutely smashed it out of the park and got there quicker. And he did actually win far more Football of the Years and Ballon d'Ors, even though he wasn't good in important matches. And did win Champions Leagues with PSG, as opposed to Isaac, who didn't win any at Chelsea. He played in a much more competitive league, and Isaac did still win six league titles. They both had fantastic careers, but unimportant Uriah did have the better career, despite the fact he wasn't as good in important matches. Now, forget who has suggested this. Now, there will be more of these hidden attribute deep dives, but we'll be cross-pollinating two of them. It was in a bit of a versus sort of style that will be coming to the channel very, very soon. So keep an eye out for that, gang. Subscribe if you haven't already. Please do take care of yourselves. Thank you very much for joining me, and thank you very much for watching. Please do like the video, and like I said, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you very, very soon.